Welcome. We're so glad that you chose to spend part of your weekend with us. I hope your new year is off to a great start. I'm excited today to jump into the topic that we sense the Holy Spirit inviting us to focus on in 2023, and that is the topic of prayer. You know, growing up in our family, prayer was an, a part of our everyday life. In fact, we couldn't get out of bed until 7 o'clock in the morning because my mom and dad woke up early um, to pray with one another and to spend time with God. And then any time any of us got sick or hurt, the first thing we did was that we would pray before we do anything else, inviting God's healing power to come, um, which is actually a really great parenting hack because if you didn't know, kids get sick and hurt a lot. So that's just free today. You can take that and use that. Um, and then, of course, we always prayed at mealtime, specifically dinner time, and then we'd pray at bedtime. And because this was such a regular part of our lives, us five kids developed basically like a short memorized prayer for the dinner time prayer and for our bedtime prayer. Well, one night it was my turn to pray at dinner, and so we closed our eyes and we grabbed hands, and I began to pray, and I said, Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Give us a good night of rest and give us good dreams. When my brothers rudely interrupted me and told me that I put in the wrong tape, now, I've already explained what a tape is in a previous message. If you don't know what it is, please go Google it. But basically, I had accidentally d done my bedtime prayer at dinner time. And so problem solved, I just quickly flip-flopped those prayers, and we moved on. But what ended up happening is that any time in the future that one of us did the wrong prayer, we dubbed it wrong tape. Now, has anyone else ever done this before? Like you've, you know, you have like a rote prayer and you've, you've used the wrong one. What I discovered is actually it's fairly common, but now you can use that if that ever happens to you. It's just called wrong tape. Well, I'm thankful that my childhood um, exposed me to prayer. Although those prayers were more rote and mechanical, I really my whole life have had a value for prayer. And that's important. Because prayer is an incredible gift that God has given us to communicate with him. You know, we can look all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. We can find passages that encourage us to pray, that challenge us to pray, that give us words to pray when we don't have prayer. You know, they've done research, and, and prayer is actually the most common spiritual practice among people who believe in God. It's more common than reading your Bible. It's more common than doing journaling. It's even more common than coming to church. And yet I know that many of us are frustrated when it comes to our prayer lives. We're frustrated. And many of us actually feel kind of stuck. And that's why we want to take some time to actually unpack prayer and how Jesus prayed. You know, <clears throat> I find that I often know that I should pray, but I don't know what to pray. And then I end up feeling shame. And then that shame keeps me from praying. And it turns kind of into this cycle. You know, I've been a Christian my whole life, and I'm a pastor, and yet I still feel like this. And I know that I'm not alone in these feelings of frustration about my prayer life. The truth is, many of us have habits, and we have routines when it comes to prayer that actually aren't helpful. We actually might have tapes that we play when we pray. I know for some of us, we start to pray, and then we stop. We get excited, and then we get bored. Many of us are unsure of how to develop a rich, healthy, and let's be honest, fun prayer life. And so that's what we want to explore. We want to be people of prayer, people who embrace prayer, who understand prayer, who practice prayer, who enjoy all the amazing benefits of prayer. So how do we do this? Well, today I'm going to launch us into our brand new series, which we've entitled Pray Like Jesus. And we're going to explore the topic of prayer by looking at how Jesus prayed. You know, Jesus was a man of prayer. He understood the privilege of communicating with his father, and he modeled prayer throughout his time here on earth. Just a couple of quick references as we begin. In Mark 1.35, it says this, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. A few gospels later, this is in Luke 5.16, we once again read, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Jesus has a lot to teach us 
about the privilege of prayer. And so I'm going to start today by inviting the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and give us ears to hear what he has for us. And so, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. We thank you, God, for the incredible privilege of prayer. And I pray right now for ears to hear and open hearts for what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I think we better start by just talking about what is prayer? How would we define prayer? And in the simplest terms, prayer is a conversation with God. It's where we share our hurts and our hopes and our hangups with the person who created us, and we allow him to speak back to us. Prayer is a conversation. It's not supposed to just be us praying to God. It's then God speaking back to us. And prayer is often how we share our concerns, we ask for wisdom, we ask for discernment and his grace and his healing. And then in turn, it's where God speaks back to us and he speaks life and wholeness, correction, confirmation. Prayer is one of the ways that we are able to tell God how much we love him. And in return, God loves to use prayer to lavish his love on us. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? It's actually simple but it's not always easy. Prayer is often a difficult discipline for even the most dedicated disciples of Jesus. And I believe that this is in part because we are having a conversation with someone who we cannot physically see, hear, or touch. And that can make this conversation oftentimes feel more one-sided. Have you ever sat down and you've thought to yourself, I am going to pray up a storm. I'm going to pray for hours. It's just gonna flow right out of me. And so, you know, you you look at the clock and you begin to pray. And within a few minutes, you're like, I I have no words. I can't even remember what I was praying about. And then you look at the clock and it's been like three minutes. Anybody else? Right? It's like we have this deep desire to communicate and to talk with God. And yet oftentimes, it can be so frustrating. As a quick aside, there are actually many different types of prayer. There's healing prayer and prophetic prayer and intercessory prayer and corporate prayer. Those are just a few types of prayer. During this series, we're really gonna focus in on our personal prayer lives where we spend time talking to God in our everyday lives. And this is really important because we are in relationship with our Father. We believe that we are in union with Jesus. That means that Jesus has come to live inside us through his Holy Spirit, and we want to nurture this relationship. We want this relationship to actually produce fruit in our lives. Why? Because I don't know if you got the memo, but life is pretty hard. It's the first week of 2023, and I don't know about you, but I have needed God way more than I thought I was going to need him in the first eight days of the new year. We want to nurture this relationship with our Father. You know, if, if you talk to like marriage counselors and therapists and you read books on marriage, you talk to a pastor, most people would say, most of those resources would say that communication is one of the most important things in our marriage, that you talk to one another. In the same way, our union or our marriage with Jesus is so incredibly vital because when we share our hearts with him, when we connect with him, we are understood and we understand who our Father is. We actually can do life in a way that is whole and refreshing and fun. That is why learning to talk to God is so important. Did you know that there's not a single thing you can't pray about? That just blows my mind. Sometimes I know that I'll think to myself, oh, I'm not gonna pray about that, or that's just life. Like, what's the point? Like, he's busy. He's got, like, world peace to worry about. He doesn't need to worry about... this small thing, but I think we're actually missing an opportunity to more fully connect with our Father. So let me just tell you some of the things I've prayed about this week. So lost items. Any other people have lost items? Okay, a library book that was lost. We found it. Um, Loveys, we're a lovey family. Like, you have to have the lovey to go to bed. So our three-year-old needed it. We found it. AirPods, we did not find it, but someone was definitely blessed. And I'm just trying to stay positive on that note. Okay, we were playing for physical healing. Like this week, one of my kids had a stubbed toe, you know, and that's really painful, so we prayed. And our three-year-old, um, her feet fall asleep all the time because of the way she likes to sit. And so she came to me and told me she needed a Band-Aid. But I said, I've got something even better. We're gonna pray, and God's gonna bring your heal- the, that feeling back. And lo and behold, it worked. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I got an ear infection this week, and so I've been praying that my hearing would actually return. It's, it's actually not normal right now, But I've been praying and asking God about that. I've been praying about some things at work. 
you know, an issue with a staff member who shall remain nameless, because that would be really mean to like say their name right now, um, a breakthrough on this very message. Do you talk to God about big things and little things? about fun things and difficult things. He actually wants to talk about it all. He is your father who created you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he delights in our willing communication with him. It's one of his absolute favorite things. So wow, you know, if prayer is this amazing and this fun and this powerful, why do we struggle? Why is it hard? Why do we get stuck with tapes of prayer? Well, we've talked about the challenge of God physically not being present um, as we're praying with him, but I think we also have to consider that we have an enemy, and he wants to keep us from talking to our loving Father. And so I'm just going to share two of the strategies that the enemy uses on me, and maybe you can relate to these. The first strategy is shame. When it comes to my prayer life, I often feel like I'm not a very good prayer. I don't know if I prayed long enough. I don't know if I prayed right. And then I kind of get into this vicious cycle where I feel shame, and then I pray less, and then I'm just kind of stuck in this place where I don't feel great about my prayer life, but I'm not praying more because I don't feel great about my prayer life. And I believe that the enemy has used shame to silence many of us when it comes to our prayer lives. And today, I believe there's freedom. The second area that I have been attacked by the enemy when it comes to my prayer life is doubt. You know, you pray for something, and then, you know, you kind of feel that feeling in your, in your heart like, did you notice that thing you prayed for? It didn't happen. I'm like, yes, obviously. Thank you for the reminder. And I begin to doubt that God is good. I begin to doubt that actually my prayers work. I begin to doubt, like, what's even the point? Like, why have the conversation with God? Because it doesn't seem to work. And yes, I did put that in quotes because that's not actually how prayer works. But we're going to talk more about that today and in the series over the next seven weeks. You see, so many of us view prayer as transactional, but at its heart, prayer is relational. We are in a relationship with a loving Father who wants to communicate with us, but when we make prayer transactional, this for that, we will always be dissatisfied. I think that Jesus wants us to have freedom in this place. So real talk right now. We're having a cup of coffee. We're just sharing our hearts with each other. How's your prayer life? Is it fun and fruitful? Do you find yourself begging God more than believing in him? Do you find that you don't know what to say or you get bored or you get tired or you're not even sure what prayer should look like? Do you ever feel that your prayers are dull or repetitive? Have you stopped praying? If you're discouraged about your prayer life, I have good news for us today. I believe that Jesus wants to show us a fresh approach to prayer that is proven and has a methodology to it. You see, Jesus lived a life of prayer. He showed us what a life of prayer could look like. He lived it and he modeled it for us. He really understood that prayer is a privilege. It's a special right that we have as children of God to be able to speak to our loving Father. And I think for many of us, we are not taking full advantage of this incredible benefit, of this gift. Have you ever uh, realized that you've missed out on like a perk or a benefit before? Is there anything worse than realizing that your Kohl's cash has expired? <laughs> I mean, that is free money. At least you could have gotten a pair of socks, right? We have something so much more amazing than Cole's cash. We have the ability to speak intimately and be connected intimately with the one who created us and loves us and knows us better than anyone else in the world. We have an incredible privilege of speaking and connecting with our Father, and this is what we want to learn to take advantage of. We want to embrace the privilege of prayer this year, take advantage of this perk, experience the beauty of this gift. We actually want to position ourselves so that we can communicate with the one who created us, and we want to learn how to process life through prayer because that's God's best and that's God's design. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how, what Jesus taught us about prayer. And we're going to explore that a little bit. You know, when we look at the story of the Bible, we see that humanity was created to communicate. Look at the very beginning of the Bible. Adam and Eve are created, and they're in the garden. And what are they doing with God? They're talking with God. 
God's giving them instructions. They're talking back and forth. And so we see that we were created to communicate. We were created to have intimacy with our Father. Of course, as the story goes, sin separated us from God. And the story of the Bible is the story of God reconnecting and reconciling with humanity. Now, all throughout the Old Testament, what we see is that there were rules and covenants put into place so that the people of God could learn to relate to God, okay? And there were a lot of regulations. And that kind of went across the board, right? And it definitely affected their prayer life. You know, prayers in the, in the Old Testament were way more transactional. They, they were way more formal, and they were way more formulaic. And oftentimes, you know, prayer would happen in places like the synagogue or the temple, or there were certain times the day that people would stop whatever they were doing, and they would say their prayers. But again, these prayers, they were more formal. They were formulaic. And so this is where people God's people lived for hundreds of years. Well, Jesus shows up on the scene. And remember, Jesus, when he came, he set aside his divinity to become one of us. And so he understands us. He gets us. He knows what it's like physically and emotionally and spiritually and mentally and all of these different things. And this is really important because when Jesus was here, he was an example for us. And so we can look at how Jesus actually did prayer, how he actually practiced what he preached when it came to prayer. And so Jesus shows up on the scene, and you guys, he has this vibrant, robust prayer life. Like when he prays, it's intimate. It's powerful. it's, It's so different. And the disciples are like, have you noticed? Like, this guy knows how to pray. In fact, Jesus talked about prayer, he uh, he taught on prayer, he taught parables on prayer, and then he actually modeled prayer. We read a couple of those verses where he would go away and he would actually spend time alone praying. And the disciples at a certain point, they're just like, okay, something is different about this. I got to figure this out. What is going on? And so in the gospel of Luke, we actually can read that the disciples say to Jesus, they say, hey, how do you pray? Can you teach us how to pray? And they wanted to learn how to pray like Jesus. We're actually going to go to the gospel of Matthew because that's the gospel that kind of expands that teaching on how to pray. And I'm going to start in Matthew 6, 5. And what Jesus is going to do first here is he's going to say, don't do this when you pray. Okay, so this is Matthew 6, verse 5. When you pray, Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need before you even ask him. You know, Jesus does not mince his words here. And as someone who struggles sometimes to be direct, I'm over here like taking notes. I'm like, okay, how did he do that? Okay, what, what did he say? I'm going to try Jesus's way. He does not mince, this is a stern rebu- rebuke. He actually says not all prayer is productive. And I actually think we need to sit with that for a minute. Some of us are frustrated right now because we have been praying in a non-productive way, and Jesus actually wants us to stop doing that. He says two things to us specifically here. He says, don't make prayer a public spectacle. What does he mean by this? Does he mean that like we're never supposed to pray in public? No. What he is talking about is he's talking about our personal prayer lives, that that is actually an invitation to intimacy where we are actually to go away with our Father. We aren't supposed to be praying, you know, for all to hear. This is an intimate conversation between you and your Father. In fact, if all you ever pray is in front of people for show, that's the only reward that you'll ever get. And the Father wants to reward you with things. He wants to tell you his deep secrets and his mysteries. And that's going to happen during your prayer time. Now, this is the passage where many people um, get the idea of the prayer closet. Now, did anyone else as a child think that it was actually a closet, or was that just me? Oh, good, a couple people, my people. (laughs) Now, that is a metaphorical thing, right? It's your prayer closet can be anywhere. It can be in your car. It can be in a chair. But it is this idea that we actually go away with our Father. We are intimate with our Father. We make space to actually separate ourselves from our everyday lives. 
So the bottom line here is there is an invitation to intimacy with our Father. The second thing that Jesus says here is don't babble on and on. Don't just like repeat words on and on. This is actually called pagan prayer. You see, in paganism, you appease the gods and you get what you want. This is transactional. If I do this, then I'll do this. And can I be honest? We all fall prey to this. We all say, okay, okay, if I say it like, okay, Lord, okay, no, that, no. Loving thought. You, you try to manipulate your words. You try to think, okay, if I pray just the right way, God's going to give me what I want. And what ends up happening is when we fall into pagan prayer, all the pressure falls on us. And guess what? We have none of the power. And so we want to say no to pagan prayer. We actually want to pray the way our Father wants us to pray. I love how Eugene Peterson, who wrote the Message Bible, how he translates Matthew 6 and 7 to help us understand what Jesus is trying to say here. This is what um, the message says. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. And so what Jesus is saying here is that when we pray to our father, we actually get to pray very simply. This is our father. You don't need a formula because you have a friendship. You are to actually know that your father knows you better than you know yourself. He loves you. He has good things for you. And I actually think that what Jesus is ultimately saying here is that he is grieved by our super spiritual attempts of moaning and groaning when it comes to prayer. He's weary from our need to impress him or manipulate him, and he's saddened that we've misunderstood prayer and given up on doing it. The good news is that Jesus has a better way. And so what Jesus ends up doing now in the following verses is he actually gave them a prayer. It's not a formula, but it is a format. A format that will actually change your prayer life for the better this year and every year after this that you pray this prayer. Now, a format, just the definition of a format, is a general plan of organization. A general plan of organization. So it's not a formula, but it is kind of a structure that we can use. And if you think about your life, there are so many ways that we use formats in our everyday life. You use formats at work, with communication, in sports, with our schedules. They're all around us. And this prayer is a format that can help us organize our prayer times with the Father, and it is commonly called the Lord's Prayer. Now, as soon as I say the Lord's Prayer, or you might have heard it called Our Father, that is what Catholics call it, what images come to your mind? For some reason, in my mind, I see a little girl in a nightgown kneeling by a bed with her hands like this. And then I also think about like randomly reciting the Lord's Prayer, usually with like kind of like a half British accent. Um, I'm not quite sure why. Um, but most of us, this is one of the most recited uh, passages in all of the Bible. And so most of us have a little bit of a history when it comes to the Lord's Prayer. Now, unfortunately, this prayer over the years has not actually been used appropriately. This prayer is not actually supposed to be rotely repeated. It's not supposed to be memorized and then kind of mumbled out like, well, I better say my prayers. This prayer if that was the point, the prayer would be transactional. It would be formulaic. Instead, this prayer is a format. It is a guide that can help us actually connect with the heart of the Father. Um, what I love is that, you know, we've already established we have been created to communicate with our Father. And so this prayer is just a communication tool to help us in that time. It's actually less about what we pray and more about how we pray. And if, if you read in the Bible, you know, Jesus, in some of the different translations, he basically says, before he says this prayer, like, pray like this. This is how you want to pray. And so these themes are going to be a, a channel for each of us to be able to know how to pray. Prayer is a privilege, and we want to partake in that privilege. And we want to pray like Jesus instructed us. At its heart, the Lord's Prayer is actually about aligning our heart with our Father's heart. Because you see, the, the Lord's Prayer is actually all about God's mission to bring hope and healness, or hope and wholeness and healing to our world. And so we get to join in that. It's about realigning ourselves, refocusing ourselves, and connecting with our, our, with our Father. 
you know, one thing I love about this prayer is it actually covers all the bases of daily life. And so it's, it's a comprehensive prayer. In this prayer, it can be done in one minute or it can be done in one hour, depending on how much time you have. You can do this prayer while you're sitting and maybe you're journaling out this prayer. You can do this prayer while you're driving, while you're hiking, while you're walking. You can do this prayer in so many different ways. Again, it's a format, a framework that we can use, that we can pray with assurance that we are praying the will of God, which I think is a really big deal. This prayer is the way Jesus instructed us to pray. And tools like this, they keep us from begging God and keep us believing in him. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to read to us the Lord's Prayer, and I'm actually going to use the New King James Version, which is not a version we use a lot, but I think this language is actually the language that maybe you've heard the Lord's Prayer in before. And so this is Matthew 6, verse 9 through 13. In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That is the Lord's Prayer. And what we're going to do is over the next seven weeks, we're actually going to unpack each of these categories. We're going to break the prayer down into seven different categories. And we're actually going to spend time exploring each of the areas that, that Jesus invited us to pray about. And what we're going to discover is actually in each of these areas, there is a lot that we can pull from. We, we can expand this prayer. We can collapse this prayer, kind of depending upon what we need each and every Day. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually just going to briefly take us through the seven sections, and I'm just going to explain a little bit about them, and then we're going to like go deep in the next couple of weeks in these areas. Okay, so the first section is our Father in heaven. This is where we want to acknowledge that our Father is our Father, that we are his beloved children, that he is in heaven ruling and reigning over it all. And this is where I like to just turn my attention and my affection to, to my father. It's, it's a good reminder because you see, when you begin the prayer by reminding yourself who you're praying to, your prayer changes. And so you take some time and, and hear me say, you know, this prayer can be used in so many different ways. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to pause in between each of the sections and, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak back to me. Because remember, this is a two-way conversation. So our father in heaven, you're just taking time to say, God, I'm here, and you're here, and we're about to have a conversation. The second part is, hallowed be your name. This is where we actually take time to honor who our Father is. Who is he? What are his names? This is where I actually sometimes love to write out the, 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 the names of him that come to my mind. You know, that he's counselor and mighty and holy and worthy. And I just begin to repeat these things back to God. And it's recentering me. It's recalibrating my mind to remind myself that I am talking to the creator of the world. And so we begin the prayer very carefully, very importantly, by um, centering the prayer around our Father. And then the third part of the prayer is um, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is the part of the prayer where we explore the dynamic of the kingdom. You know, the kingdom of God has come. When Jesus came, he brought the kingdom of God. That means that we can experience hope and healing and, and freedom right now, but we also know that we don't always get that. It's not fully here. That's why this week, when I was praying this prayer, I was thanking God that he healed my body I'm not in any pain, but I, I prayed that the kingdom would continue to break in so that my hearing would be returned. I had a lot more empathy this week for people who have hearing issues after your ear being clogged for several days. I mean, it's intense, but this is the part of the prayer where you, where you can take time to say, okay, Lord, I want to see an increase of your power and your presence, of your rule and your reign in my life, in my family's life, in my sphere of influence, in our community, in our nation. This is where you pray that heaven would come to earth, that healing and hope and wholeness and reconciliation and justice would come and be here on earth. It's an incredible opportunity to get to partner with God in what he's doing. 
The next part of, of, the, of the prayer is give us this day our daily bread. This is where, again, we're, we're reminding ourselves that our God is our provider. Every day we have daily needs. Every day you got stuff that you need the Lord to, 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 to give you. And so every day you're just posturing yourself. You're saying, okay, Lord, today I need you. And then you're thanking him for all the ways that he has provided for you. You're saying, thank you for my food and for my home and for my clothing and for my family and that every bill is paid and that you are faithful and that you are generous. You are reminding yourself, it's actually not your money. It's his I'm telling you, this prayer can change you. It can weave things out of you that that God wants to free you from. The next part of this prayer is forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is such an important part of the prayer because forgiveness actually is such a huge thing to Jesus. You know, we want to be people who freely receive the incredible forgiveness, past, present, future, all of our sins wiped free. We want to learn to live in that new identity as a righteous saint. And then we want to learn to freely forgive. What what an amazing testimony if in 2023, we decided as children of God, we wanted to live without offense. We wanted to live full of freedom and full of forgiveness. When people did us wrong, we could actually give them back to God and free ourselves from all that the enemy wants to trap us up with. And so this is a part of the prayer. I like to just take some time. I like to listen and say, okay, God, who do I need to forgive? Probably Mike. (laughs) Probably my teenager. Yeah, and you know what? He's so faithful. He's so faithful to actually tell you. He's so faithful to actually say, hey, let's get rid of this. And then the next part of the prayer is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I don't need to tell you that we live in a crazy world where there is so much evil and there are so many traps laid out by the enemy. And what what this is saying is, this is saying, God, you are my protector. You are the one who goes before me. I love to pray that angels protect my kids, Ty, Tate, Maggie, Molly, and Mike. And I I love to just say, Father, lead us not into temptation, like deliver me from the evil one. Don't even let me go down that path. And then protect us, Father, as we go about our everyday lives. And then you end the prayer by saying, yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever, amen. And this is where I just wanna encourage you, let loose on God. This is just where you praise him and you thank him and you honor him and you you do what you wanna do. And you say, God, this is who you are. You see, this prayer, it's not a formula. It's not gonna tell you exactly what to say. It is a format. It is a guide to actually help us, to give us guardrails, to say, okay, God, these are all the areas that I know that are important to you. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're actually joining Jesus in his mission. We're actually saying yes to intimacy with our Father, to be able to have these conversations, to be able to to speak out truth and then hear truth. This is what the Father is inviting us to in 2023. And so here's my challenge to each of us right now. Let's make a conscious choice. Let's decide that we will pray the Lord's Prayer every day in 2023. Whether you're feeling great about prayer or frustrated about prayer or bored, I believe that Jesus has a revelation for each of us. Let's try praying like Jesus this year. Let's make 2023 the year where we talk to God about everything and allow him space to speak back to us because prayer is a privilege and I think we should take advantage of it. I'm gonna pray now and then we're gonna do some worship. And so Holy Spirit, we need your help to do this. We know that prayer is an incredible privilege, God, and we thank you for the Lord's prayer. We thank you for the teaching of Jesus and the words that he's given us. And I just pray, God, as we enter into 2023, that you would give us guts, God. You would give us gumption. You would would help us be able to say yes to this incredible opportunity of talking with you and sharing our lives with you and connecting with you in such a beautiful and intimate way. And so now, God, as we go into worship, we just invite your presence more fully. We just thank you for what you want to do with the rest of the time we have together today. In Jesus' name, amen.